Welcome to installation and maintenance of health IT systems, system selection, functional and technical requirements. The objectives for this unit, system selection, functional and technical requirements, are to identify 12 possible steps to choosing an EHR system, gather functional requirements from institutions and others, and document use cases and relate them to functional requirements. The purchase of an EHR system will have a profound effect on your practice or healthcare institution. It is important that you develop a plan for assessing your institution's needs to facilitate vendor selection. Today we are going to discuss 12 steps in the decision-making process when choosing an EHR system. Though neither these steps nor the order in which you choose to execute them are written in stone, we have chosen to present them in a logical progression to help you understand the importance of developing a plan that will work for your organization and to help ensure that you are capable of making a high-quality decision when it comes to EHR selection. The article, How to Select an Electronic Health Record System, lists 12 recommended steps to evaluating an EHR system. 1. Identify the decision makers. 2. Clarify your goals. 3. Determine functional requirements and write a request for proposal or RFP. 4. Determine RFP recipients. 5. Review RFP responses. 6. Attend vendor demonstrations. 7. Check references. 8. Rank vendors. 9. Conduct site visits. 10. Select a finalist. 11. Solidify organizational buy-in. And 12. Negotiate the contract. Now let's discuss each of the steps in some detail. People, as well as whole institutions, are often resistant to change. Despite the fact that many agree on the benefits of using electronic records, resistance will certainly become evident when discussing conversion to an EHR system within your own institution. Success or failure will often hinge on how well the EHR system is received by managers and practitioners alike, as well as on ensuring that staff and management are comfortable that their concerns have been adequately addressed during the decision-making process. Here are some tips to help ensure adequate buy-in for your EHR selection process. In many healthcare institutions, the selection of EHR systems has been led by committed physicians who devote much time and energy into learning about EHR systems and promoting adoption to their peers. Consider this tactic when considering who will be involved in the selection process. Also, remember to keep your committee as diverse as possible, being sure to invite influential people from all elements of the institution, managers and staff alike, to assist with the selection efforts. Before evaluating EHR systems, you must evaluate your institution. In this stage, you will want to examine what it is you want to accomplish with your new EHR system. Define which inefficiencies and limitations you currently see in your environment today. For instance, do lab reports take too long to be added to the patient chart? Are your billing codes consistently outdated? Be sure to identify the overall business strategy for your organization and be sure that these goals are in alignment there as well. A critical step to purchasing any health information technology is performing a requirements analysis of your environment. In the past, performing a requirements analysis often involved asking stakeholders what they wanted in the application they were seeking. For clinical information systems, this process has not worked well primarily because most stakeholders simply have not been exposed to these systems adequately to understand their overall potential and possible limitations, often resulting in assessments with minimal functionality or unrealistic expectations. Today, most experts recommend a three-step process for identifying functional and non-functional requirements. Understand existing standards, understand the marketplace, and apply use cases. Functional requirements can be defined as those processes that you want a system to perform. These can be discussed as an overview or can be analyzed in great detail. The more granular you get with your requirements, the better overall understanding you will have of how the systems will work and the impact implementation will have on workflow and processes. There are copious examples of functional requirements, 
from results reporting to remote access, and on and on. Conducting a needs assessment will assist in these efforts. Once you have identified the functionalities your system should have, rank them in order of importance. It may be helpful to classify them as must-haves, want-to-haves, and not criticals. Perhaps results reporting is more important in your institution than electronic fax reports. Maybe remote access is critical because of the number of satellite locations. Next, map these needs you have identified to the specific system features and functionality which will address them. Be sure to take time to learn what's available from the many vendors providing EHR solutions. Browsing the Internet for ideas, as well as reading up on vendor specifications and trade publications, can give you an idea of what functionality requirements are most often associated with your particular organization, and thus can paint a picture of the market norm. Now let's discuss the HL7 EHR system functional model, which is a repository of standard EHR functions that could be very helpful in your assessment. HL7, which stands for Health Level 7, is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization involved in the development of international healthcare standards for storing and exchanging clinical and administrative data. The February 2007 version of the functional model contains more than 160 functions which form a superset of possible EHR functions, more than any one system is likely to need. Subsets of these functions, called functional profiles, are then created and described for use in specific healthcare settings, such as behavioral health, child health, and emergency department. Each functional statement has corresponding conformance criteria, which provide more detail about how the system can carry out the task. Healthcare organizations can use this model to help generate their EHR requirements. The following steps provide a good start in taking advantage of the functional model as a tool. Learn the keywords used in developing criteria. Shall is used to indicate a mandatory requirement for an EHR system to achieve conformance with the standard. Should indicates an optional or recommended action for an EHR system. May indicates an optional or permissible action for an EHR system. Learn to read the model. Understand that there are over 160 functions divided into three sections. Direct care, supportive, information infrastructure and that it is represented as a hierarchical list. Lastly, review the model, particularly a relevant functional profile if available, and select sections relevant to your particular healthcare setting. Then evaluate each of these functions to determine relevance to your organization. Let's look at an example of an HL7 functional statement and its related conformance criteria. The functional statement says the system provides patient data in a manner that meets local requirements for de-identification. To meet the standard for this function, four conformance criteria are given. The system shall provide de-identified data according to realm-specific law or custom when requested by an authorized internal or external party. The system should comply with 1.2.4 Extraction of Health Record Information Conformance Criteria 2 the system should provide de-identification functionality for extracted information. The system may provide the ability to export de-identified data to authorized recipients. The system may provide a key with de-identified data to enable re-identification of the data or the contact of primary care provider. Non-functional requirements refer to attributes of the system as a whole or its environment rather than to specific tasks that the user needs to accomplish, like writing an electronic prescription. Non-functional requirements include Usability is the ease with which a system can be learned and used. An example of a non-functional requirement for usability would be that the end user can navigate to any page in the EHR in five clicks or fewer. Reliability is the degree of uptime the system must perform for the users. An example of a non-functional requirement for reliability would be that the EHR system will have redundant backups, allowing for 99.5% uptime. Performance usually refers to how well the system works for the user in measurable degrees. Examples of performance would be response time and capacity. 
Supportability is the application's ability to be easily modified or maintained to accommodate typical usage or change scenarios. Scalability is the ability to increase the number of users or applications associated with the product. System requirements would include minimum and recommended required operating systems, commercial-grade software development tools, specific hardware or platform requirements, and any environmental requirements, such as redundant environmental controls. Legal and regulatory requirements would include telecommunication requirements, compliance, etc. Security is the ability to provide confidentiality, data integrity, and data availability, for example, as mandated by HIPAA. An example of a non-functional requirement for security would be the capability to log all patient access by any user in the system and retaining such logging for one year. A use case is a technique for documenting the potential requirements of a new system or any type of system change. Each use case provides one or more scenarios that explain how the system should interact with the end user or another system component to achieve a specific goal or function. Use cases are usually written in simple terms and focus on how workflow processes correspond with system or application processes to accomplish the goal. As an example, here is a use case scenario for writing a prescription for a patient before an EHR is available. The analyst gathers this information from interviews, observations, or any combination of the two. First, Joe pulls out his prescription pad and pen. Next, Joe consults with a pocket drug reference to check the usual dosage. Then Joe glances at Jane's allergy list to make sure she is not allergic to the new medication. Next, Joe handwrites the drug name and the SIG, in other words, the dose, route, frequency, quantity, and number of refills. Finally, Joe hands the handwritten prescription paper to Jane for her to bring to the pharmacy. Now this use case describes the same task with an EHR, also known as e-prescribing. First, Joe activates the e-prescribing module within the EHR. Next, Joe searches for and selects the drug he wants to prescribe, and he sees the usual dosage, frequency, etc., presented as options on screen. Next, the e-prescribing system checks behind the scenes to see whether Jane is allergic to the selected medication or whether it has any significant interactions with her other current prescriptions. Then Joe fills in the required data to complete the prescription. If it is a commonly prescribed medication, he quickly selects a complete prescription, that is, drug, dose, route, quantity, refills, etc., from a list of common options for that drug. Finally, Joe asks Jane from which pharmacy she would prefer to pick up the medication, selects that pharmacy in the system, transmits the e-prescription, and tells Jane it should be available for pickup shortly. As you can see from comparing the tables, the analyst expects to see significant improvement in this process once the EHR system has been installed. The analyst will use this scenario to compare performance ratios with each of the EHR vendors. There could be dozens of use cases to consider when choosing a new EHR system before it is all said and done. The case study analyst will look at each of the various components, including needed software, hardware, data transmission, change in workflow, etc., that would provide the best fit for seeing each of these scenarios to completion. Now let's discuss how you would create a Request for Proposal, or RFP, following a specific outline to tell prospective vendors what they need to know about your practice in order to provide you with useful information about their products. This will help ensure that the responses you receive can be easily compared. A typical outline for an RFP includes cover letter, introduction and selection process, background information, including organization size and specialty, and current systems and hardware in place, and desired EHR functionality. Vendor information you should receive should, at the very least, include product description, hardware and network components needed, customer maintenance and support and warranties, training available, system implementation plan, proposed costs, sample contract, and applicable references. There are more than 200 different EHR systems currently available on the market. 
How can you narrow the list to only those EHR systems most relevant for your organization? Start with these four questions. Does the software have a history of interfacing with your practice management system, or PMS? To work effectively, your PMS, which generally performs operational functions such as patient scheduling, billing and reporting, and the EHR must be able to share data. This is typically done through a software interface. Building, maintaining, and updating an interface requires the cooperation of personnel from both companies. Be sure that these two systems can talk to each other with a minimal amount of customization. Is the EHR typically marketed to practices of your size? EHR vendors typically market their systems to one of three scales. Small practices with 1 to 15 providers, medium-sized practices with 10 to 99 providers, or large practices with 100 or more providers. Does the EHR have favorable published ratings? Several excellent sources for EHR ratings are available. In 2003, for example, the American College of Rheumatology, in conjunction with the Aurora Consulting Group, evaluated EHRs in small practices. Also, trade shows, such as Healthcare Information and Management Systems Society, or HIMSS, or Towards an Electronic Patient Record, or TEPR, can provide opportunities to see vendors' wares and glean knowledge from showgoers. Does the EHR meet your organization's functionality needs? Will the EHR adequately address all or most of the goals and functionality requirements you are looking to address with your new EHR system? Compare each system to your checklist and rankings and determine which one should receive an RFP. Now that you have received responses to your RFP, take one or two sessions as a committee to review the proposals and select the best candidates based on your criteria. Next, set up vendor demonstrations with each of your contenders. Prepare a couple of patient scenarios for them to document and use a standardized rating form. Use the same approach with each vendor to ensure consistent ratings. Check at least three references for every vendor that is still in the running. Ideally, references should include one or more physician users, an information technology, IT person, and a senior management person. The vendor will provide you with a list of references. Note that these are likely the vendor's happiest customers and they may even be financially rewarded for talking to you. For example, discounts on service fees or individual rewards. So be skeptical. Nonetheless, these folks can be very informative and honest in our experience. If you know a person or group not on the vendor's reference list who has used their product, call them too. Have a prepared list of questions for these phone calls. Consider asking questions of each reference centered around these areas. Background provider usage, training and support, implementation and hardware, and satisfaction. Now that you've reviewed the RFPs, seen the vendor demos, and done all the reference checks for each vendor you are considering, it's time to rank the vendors and narrow the field to two or three vendors for whom you should set up site visits to view the software in action. Site visits can take up lots of time and can require the organizational efforts of a master to get your team together at a common time, making more than three visits pretty much impractical. Before you rank the vendors, you should formally weigh your priorities in the following areas. Functionality. How well does the product perform to your specifications? Total cost. How much will the product cost, including all the needed hardware, software, technical support, etc.? Vendor services. Will the vendor provide the expected service, training, and initial implementation support, and will they be there for the long haul? Once you've selected your final contenders, plan site visits to see how the systems perform. Go to practices that are similar in size and configuration to yours. If possible, go to one that is using the same practice management system, or PMS, that you are using. Bring at least one physician and the most senior management person that will be responsible for the EHR purchase. Plan to visit with physicians and observe them with patients. Also talk to their back office personnel, relevant management, and key IT personnel. Take notes. Finally, after each site visit, go back to your vendor rankings and see if they still agree with your latest findings.
select your top contender and a runner-up. If negotiations don't go well with your number one choice, you may want to fall back on your runner-up instead of wasting more time reevaluating the vendor pool again. Earlier, as part of the RFP, you asked each vendor to list the minimum and recommended hardware and software requirements for installing their version of the EHR in your institution's environment. Choosing the right hardware is important to ensure that your EHR's performance potential is fully realized and to minimize installation and performance issues down the road. Hopefully, as part of the decision-making process, your institution has already come to terms that at least some technology will need to be acquired or upgraded to accommodate the integration of a new EHR system. Prior to solidifying a deal with a particular vendor, take a hard look at these requirements, being sure to address these issues. Take an inventory of your current server, workstation, and mobile technology hardware, such as laptops and PDAs, as well as the current operating systems and applications being deployed and used in your computing environments. Do the vendor's specifications align well with your current technologies? If the vendor recommendations exceed your current hardware and software requirements, is your organization prepared to dedicate the financial and organizational resources needed to meet these recommendations? Your organization is likely already using different patient management software. Your EHR will need to be able to communicate with this pre-existing system. Does the EHR you're considering integrate well with these existing packages, or will you need to budget for customized interface engines or even new PM software applications? We will discuss interfaces and interface engines in more detail in a later unit. Purchasing an EHR is usually a long-term commitment. EHR software life cycles can often span decades. Your organization will want to have the flexibility to integrate new computing technologies as they become available. Is the vendor up to date on these emerging technology trends, and are they committed to ensuring that their software will be scalable for the foreseeable future? Hopefully, if you are choosing an EHR system for a smaller practice, you have already included all the relevant decision makers in the selection process. Larger organizations may require additional selling. Consider inviting the vendor to do a public demonstration or a presentation to the stakeholders group to help solidify commitment. As noted before, typical EHR contracts span from 10 years to lifetime. If the contract is to terminate in 10 years, be sure you know what happens after that. Current and future costs should be spelled out, as should the role the vendor will play and the amount of time the vendor will commit to the implementation process. Be sure to consider the possibility that the vendor could go out of business before you do. Request that the vendor's source code be put into escrow and clarify the circumstances under which you could get access to it. Have a lawyer experienced in software contracts help with this step. Now that we've walked through those steps on evaluation and selection of EHRs, let's look briefly at the process as recommended by HealthIT.gov, a website launched in September 2011 by ONC, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology. They list nine steps, which should sound very familiar after our prior discussion. 1. Site visits for EHR solution. 2. Develop and distribute Request for Proposal, RFP. 3. Review vendor proposals. 4. Conduct vendor demonstrations. 5. Review specialty-specific functionality and general usability. 6. Identify hardware and IT support requirements. 7. Rank EHRs and compare functionality, usability, and pricing. 8. Negotiate contract and licensing agreements. And 9. Purchase an EHR solution. This concludes Unit 3, System Selection, Functional and Technical Requirements. In summary, it is important to follow a stepwise method carefully in evaluating and selecting an EHR. And we have walked through 12 such steps from the informatics literature and looked at the 9 similar steps recommended by the federal government. 
You should determine and prioritize your functional requirements using various sources, including the HL7 functional model, and create use cases to help determine and illustrate those requirements. And do not forget to pay close attention to the software and hardware requirements of the systems you consider.